Hey, welcome to my messy room. And today I'm going to talk about my experience in Amsterdam. Peter Lam. So during January, I went to Amsterdam with my family. Uh, I actually went to Amsterdam because uh, my dad had a meeting there and my dad said hey why don't you come along with me on this while I go to work and you can travel around Amsterdam and I was like heck yeah you know when else am I ever gonna go, go there anyway right uh, it was during I think it was 24th of January at the time Malaysia had its first case and we were at the time, we don't really care about Corona because we just thought it was like SARS and stuff and it's gonna blow over in a few weeks and so, but no. Um, all I can say is this, Amsterdam, yes it, it was nice, it's a very nice country and all, but like, I could say the city where I live in, Kota Kinabalu. It's much more cleaner than Amsterdam, <laughs> I could say, especially in the central area. Uh, if you walk a few miles from the way, the place I stayed, by the way, you could find cigarette butts almost everywhere in the street, even in the bus stops and whatever, even in the train stops. Like, I wouldn't say Amsterdam is clean. Yeah, it was a dirty city. Speaking of which, let's talk about weed. Um, everywhere, everywhere you go in Amsterdam, uh, you could you could smell. There's always that smell of marijuana everywhere you go. I know. How, <laughs> yes, you might ask like, hey, how do you know how marijuana smells like? You you kind of know it when you go there. You could smell it on the train, you could smell it on the streets, even outside, outdoors. Everywhere you go, there's a marijuana smell. And, you know, kids actually walk by those streets and they can smell the marijuana around the air and those kids be like, Oh, this is just like a normal day in Amsterdam. So, my first day in Amsterdam, we went around the city and we went, went to the windmills in Zaxe Shans, I don't know how to say it. Uh, that, that place, I would say, would be the cleanest place i ever been to. I mean, like, it was amazing. You could see the windmills, you could see like animals going around, the birds and stuff. So, on the third day, I went to Efling by train. It was about an hour, an hour ride from Amsterdam to the city of Katshuvel. I think it, that's how you say it. So Elfling is like a fantasy world, basically like uh, Disneyland, but like the Dutch version. The attractions in Efling mainly reflect on myths, legends, Dutch folklore, or basically just fairy tales in general. Most of it um, is about like uh, Little Red Riding Hood or Snow White uh, and the Seven Dwarfs, Gold Deluxe and other attractions. Gladly there was no Elsa. In Effling I went on this roller coaster. It's called like the Baron or something, I forgot. It was like a 9 foot, 10 story building, tall roller coaster that goes down 90 degrees towards the ground. It was it was crazy. It was epic. So I went up the roller coaster. So as I went up, you know the thing about the this Baron roller coasters, they stop in the middle. I think all roller coasters do that, but like they stop in the middle at that high elevation point where you're about to go down. So you look down and you then you realize like from the ground it isn't so tall. You wouldn't see that roller coaster as being that tall, but like from from that view, like oh my gosh, man, <laughs> that was the worst regret I had in my life, I guess. I was like, whoa. 
and everybody was there speaking Dutch and I was like oh shit Matila Sial <laughs> and then the roller coaster went down like Shoo. my heart stopped in time I wasn't even thinking I was like oh shit that's the only thing I remember that's the last thing I remember what I was saying so went down downhill and after that it was a uh, Pretty mediocre, I guess. The, the turns and the slips and the turns and stuff. <laughs> After that, I got sick. <laughs> but I wasn't really sick at first. My sisters kind of noticed that I was sick after the roller coaster, and they said like, "Oh, stay away from me. I think you have corona." <laughs> uh, it was pretty. It was pretty nice. You know, as a Malaysian, we don't really see. Our fairy tales are quite different from European ones and like when you, when you go there at night with the street lights like resembling like fairy tales and stuff and you got a you got a feeling that you're like in, a, in this fairy tale world you're like, and you can see castles everywhere lighting up and that was amazing that's what I love about Netflix and we went back it was raining as frick and it was okay so Maybe to Europeans, like nine, eight, seven degrees isn't so cold. But as a true blood Sabahan, it was freaking cold. It was really cold. I got sick the next day. After Afling on the next day, me and my family, to be exact, uh, went on this boat trip to um, around the city. It was pretty expensive. I think it was a uh, twenty fifty. I think it was 50 euros per person just to go on the boat. We went around the city using that boat. Uh, our first stop was uh, Anne Frank House. And so I think, you know, my, we Malaysians aren't educated as much on the topic of Anne Frank or and stuff like, uh, especially my sister, but I know about, about Anne Frank and stuff. And um, so we took pictures on the, on the building, like Anne Frank House. And my sister thought it was just like a normal building or whatever. And she was like posting like this. Hey, and Frank, I'm here. Smiling face and a peace sign or whatever. And uh, I noticed a few Dutch people were looking at us like weird. Like, hey, what are you doing? You think this is like a Eiffel Tower or stuff? You should, you should be sad. You should be sad for this person. And you're, you're taking pictures like... And I'm like, uh... I told my family like, uh, I think... We should get out of here. <laughs> Those people were staring at us. And yeah, it was quite boring. <laughs> From the outside though. After that, uh, it, there was a tulip museum nearby. Uh, it was pretty boring. Pretty uneventful uh, on the third day. We bought some tulips, uh, decorations. Of course, not the real one. And um, after that, we went to Reich's museum. Pretty boring as well. Uh, I went there looking at uh, Dutch history, like inventors and stuff like that. I was, you know, as I said, I was sick. I was so sick. I wasn't uh, like a able to stand and stuff. I was like trying to hide my mucus from everyone because <laughs> I think at that point everybody knew about coronavirus. So I was like, what? What? And people were like, oh shit. Oh no. This this Asian kid got corona. I wasn't like sneezing as much. I was just like I was just having a runny nose and It's typical of me because I usually have a Sinus I have a sinus problem where Once every two days I get a runny nose So it was typical to me, but like maybe for them They looked at me weird Exactly <laughs> to be honest. They looked at me weird. Uh, or is it uh, just me? I think it was just me Reich's museum I would say 5 out of 10 because there was no Van Gogh. There was some paintings of Van Gogh but I got back on a boat and we saw the city at night. Oh yeah, the city was very beautiful at night. Though very cold but very beautiful. So eating in Amsterdam, it was quite nice like me as a Muslim. Uh, we only eat either Arabic or Turkish food. Uh, it was really good. Well, it tasted like typical Arabic or Turkish food here in Malaysia, but yeah. 
nothing special. I'd say the only authentic Dutch food that we really like is Strup waffle. Strup waffle is good. Uh, it was pretty delicious. I don't know why, but every time when someone brings me Strup waffle from Amsterdam, it doesn't taste good. <laughs> but when you're there, it tastes really good. <laughs> I think it's about the freshness. On the next day, at that point, I was extremely sick. I had a headache, it was cold, and I'm like, Hey mama, I was so sick. <laughs> I just spoke Russian to my mom, yes. I spoke Russian to my mom. Mama, please, I can't. So I just stayed at home. It was kind of sad that I was sick during my trip and I didn't get to go anywhere. In the morning though. But at night, um, a couple of friends of mine from Kazakhstan, um, they invited me to explore a city. So I'm like, why not? At that point at night, I, was, I wasn't really so sick anymore. So it was a bit okay. So I took the train to the city, the central, Amsterdam Central. And um, well, I went on, went, met my friend, we went around the city, <laughs> we went to the red light district, it was amazing, it was, it was something. I heard that those hookers in the red light district were really expensive. It was like the most expensive prostitute in the world. <laughs> I didn't try them, I didn't have cash, so yeah. I just looked around, it was very non-family friendly, I would say. We went to have some coffee and that was, we really had a good time, like meeting my friends. And after that, the next day, we went around the city again, pretty uneventful, just bought some souvenirs to buy for our friends and that's that. Next day, hop on a plane, back to Kuala Lumpur, we stopped in Dubai, everybody was wearing masks at the time. Uh, in uh, Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, nobody was wearing masks, so we went. <laughs> it was pretty crazy though, like uh, hopping from Schiphol to uh, Dubai International. It was a uh, completely different scene. Everybody was wearing masks. We were using hand sanitizer every day. Everybody was avoiding Asians. <laughs> nobody wanted to sit next to me um, on a plane. Uh, when we got uh, on a plane from Dubai to Kuala Lumpur, uh, I think it was a British couple who were seated next to me, and they saw me wearing a mask, and they they were like, uh -uh, "Oh no, I'm sitting next to an Asian guy." <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty. You know what? Uh, I I wouldn't. I don't take any offense from them because they were just being cautious for their own health. So yeah, I don't really blame them. Um, yeah, we took on a flight to uh, and we went back home. So that's that. I hope you enjoy my story on my experience in Amsterdam. And I would like to tell you about more stories on my trip on the next episode I guess if you like it even if you don't like it I'm still gonna do it so <laughs> like it or not yeah I'm still gonna make videos uh, thank you for listening or thank you for watching see you on the next one bye